the most delightfully fascinating character in the realms of mystery, Charlie Chan. Never before has Charlie Chan, Honolulu's famous detective, faced such a baffling problem. At Pine View, Ellen Landini and Dr. Swan are both murdered, and evidently murdered by the same person. But as to who that person can be, not a clue. Eight people at Pine View had ample reason to hate the opera singer, and of these eight, not one has a satisfactory alibi, though each in turn had opportunity. The most likely person had been Dr. Swan, but the finding of his body changed the entire outlook of the case, and Inspector Chan paces the study floor as the sheriff, Don Holt, stands staring out the window. Did you ever think, Inspector, that Swan might have killed Landini? Then Swan, in turn, might have been killed by Ireland? Ah, that is indeed untraveled avenue of thought. Your reasons, Sheriff? Not mine alone, Inspector. Leslie. So be it. No man ever yet lost anything by redistribution of credits awarded him. Well, it was no secret that Ireland hated Swan. Now, Swan was blackmailing Landini because he had found out about Landini and Ward's son. Isn't it possible that Landini had tired of paying Swan and in order to remove his power over, she decided to tell Ward? So far, your reasoning is perfectly sound. But what prevented Landini from telling Ward? Her death. Swan was mad at her when he found out that she was going to tell Ward, so Swan killed her. But that would end his blackmailing scheme? But not if he told Ward that he knew about the son and would only tell Ward of the boy's whereabouts for a price. Then where does Mr. Ireland fit into the mosaic? Ireland merely avenged Landini by killing her murderer. You have very cleverly constructed a feasible and reasonable chain of events. But, my dear Sheriff, you are overlooking certain undeniable facts. Yeah? The fact, Sheriff, that the same gun was used to commit both murders. You must, in your calculations, include a reasonable surmise as to how Ireland possessed himself of Swan's gun or whatever gun Swan used to kill Madame Landini. Well, Ireland could have taken it from Swan's room. No, no, Sheriff. Now you are guessing. You are not reasoning. Yeah, I know. You see, Sheriff, when one raises that point about the gun, one raises many more points. Let us assume for a moment that Ireland did possess himself of Swan's gun. Next move on Ireland's part would be to get Swan to meet him at unoccupied house. Would Swan go without gun if he possessed one? I think not. Most certainly not to meet Mr. Ireland, who had exposed him as blackmailer. Yeah, you're right, Inspector. Yes, I'm not so hot at figuring these uh, things one out. One moment, please, before this verbal self-reproof reaches to voluminous proportions. I think that your theory is, shall we say, about 75% correct. What? You really mean that, Inspector? But yes, my young friend. I'm not given to saying such things merely for pleasure of distributing useless praise. Then what part is right and what is wrong? Alas, Sheriff, that I cannot answer. But I will say this to you. Your theory as to why murder was committed is most probably correct. And that is longest stride yet made in this series of deductions. But, Sheriff, I think in your deliberations you place mantle of deception upon wrong person. Now go on, go on, I'm listening. Swan was killed, as we originally thought, by person who committed murder upon Madame Landini, 
because Swan had seen that murder committed. Now we come to motive which we have sought with so little success. Yeah? Murderer killed Madame Landini because... Because, Sheriff, Madame Landini had disclosed facts that she had had son. But how and who to? You and I, Sheriff, did much questioning about the destroyed letter found in fireplace. The letter addressed to John Ryder. The same. That letter undoubtedly, at least I hope, undoubtedly contained information about son, but... But you mean we don't know that it said the boy, the son, was Ward's son? That is possibility with which we must reckon. But youthful friend and associate, we have advanced. We have advanced far. Well has it been said, when mud in disturbed waters settles at bottom of pool, clear water will result, and object of search will be discernible to such as. Come in. Oh, no, no, look, I see Mr. Chan. Here, here. He, he come back. He to unoccupied house where we found Dr. Swan? Oh, no, sure, sure. And this is all the same key. Me go just now, look, see, key for seller. And this is one before, no, stay stop. Now he all the same stay stop. Well, can you beat that? I note that you carry key by piece of string. Is that on purpose, I think? Oh, sure, sure. Me all the same, a number one, a very smart policeman. You lazy, plenty of noise about me touch a cigarette box here. This is time, me no touchy key. Then, then I think there may be fingerprints. Uh, quickly, please, Sheriff. Lamp black, Campbell's hair brush, same uh, lying on writing desk. I'm yes. getting them now. Uh, here they are. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Yes? It's lovely. Oh, come in. Come in. What have you found? Why, the very air is electric with anticipation. Suspense. Suspense can now be broken. Yes? We receive confirmation that person who used this key is person who killed Landini. Mm -hmm. But that is all. There are no fingerprints. Key has been wiped clean. Oh, no fingerprints? Oh, too bad. Oh, I suppose more better we go back to kitchen. Eh? Yes, Sing. Perhaps. And, uh, I think... Eh, eh, what you like? You may take this key back. It is of no use to us now. Doggone. What a jolt that was. I thought we had the solution. <sighs> Most humbly admit to feeling of extreme disappointment myself. Foolish after these many years to let one more disappointment weigh heavily upon the shoulders. But uh, sit down, please. Business of pursuit of criminal is like game of chess. Opponent does not outwit and defeat. Defeat comes through own stupidity. What, what are you staring at, Mr. Chen? At closed door through which our thing has, only this moment past, made such dramatic exit. <sighs> Was he laughing at Charlie Chan? Did he know only too well that fingerprints had been removed from key? Does our thing, despite his years in this country, still retain that inscrutability which is born of the century? While I, I cannot throw off the garb of modern civilization which now hampers and enfolds me, when now, most earnestly, I would be myself. But enough. This is not work. We shall question Mr. Ryder. I'm not satisfied. That destroyed letter addressed to John Ryder, it is with me always. I cannot forget it. Do you wish me to go? Uh, perhaps. Uh, yes. I think it better that you both go. This meeting will embarrass Mr. Ryder concerns his honeymoon. It would not be fair, I think, to question him before you. Come on then, Leslie. We'll take a walk. All right. I want to do a little investigating around the garage. Ah, Mr. Ryder's in his room. Mr. Ryder, can I prevail upon you to come to study for one moment, please? Yes. 
this an official investigation, Chan? I see the sheriff has just accompanied Miss Beaton. It is official, Mr. Ryder. At last, he who acts for the emperor is the emperor. And he who acts for sheriff is the sheriff. Even if he's a Chinaman? Mr. Ryder, hot anger burns within me. Many persons, because of ignorance, would call one of my countrymen Chinaman. In ignorance, that is not to insult. But you, Mr. Ryder, resident many years in San Francisco, know and have not excuse of ignorance. You spoke but to hurt. I expect from man of your standing in community assistance in tracking down brutal murderers. If I cannot have same willingly, then I shall be regrettably compelled to call upon full weight of legal authority. What do you want to know about? On honeymoon with Ellen Landidi, you went to Mountain Cabin... Have you been prying into my personal affairs? He gods what a profession yours is. Of my profession, I am proud, Mr. Ryder. I have not been, as you say, prying. The question I ask is precipitated by this newspaper clipping from Madame Landini's scrapbook. Oh, yes, she would keep something like that. Just another scalp to her, that was all. During those many weeks, no mention was made of son born to Landini, of which... Mr. Ward, first husband, would be father. I have told you before, Chan, I knew nothing about any son. But you see, Mr. Ryder, you have lied before. Why should I believe you now? Now listen, Chan, I'll stand for a lot, but I'm not please, going... Please, please, Mr. Ryder, do not forget that when proper time arrives and case comes to trial, that which I have called lying becomes perjury. Very serious offense. Oh, seeing that you know so much, then, about which particular thing am I lying? Mr. Ryder, I have reason to believe that. Yes? That you think you know who is murderer of Madame Landini. Will Charlie Chan's blunt accusation force the taciturn Ryder to admit something he has withheld? And what of our sing? Did he know more of that key than he disclosed? After you've heard from your sponsor, Inspector Chan will be with us again. Inspector Chan, what little philosophical thought can you leave with us tonight? Persons are eternally asking, what is most precious thing in the world? Many years ago, famous Mandarin was asked the same. He replied, family reputation for integrity, which is benevolent shadow under which descendants live, is most precious family possession. For same requires loyalty, truthfulness, and strict adherence to the highest ideals. Thank you, Mr. Chan. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. It is gratifying privilege. Mm-hmm.